<laughs> fine. Okay. Hey guys. Hey. My husband had his second vaccine shot today and he's really like sick. <laughs> I get mine next week. I hope I don't have the same reaction. Yeah, so we're going to have a super light day because I'm feeling the effects <laughs> of that as well today. Oh, you, <laughs> yeah. And any other day so far, it's like the third day and I feel like I've been having dizzy spells all day. Like I'm super nauseous. So, oh, no. Uh, yeah, know, it's fine. Could, that's it. It's just like really annoying, honestly. Could um, we do this class another time then? I mean, you got to take care of yourself. Yeah, I'm fine. So... <laughs> Hey, whatever you know best we're gonna do, i can't just leave you guys we're gonna do a little bit but we are gonna keep it pretty light just because i can't do the back and forth stuff with the screens um but we're gonna finish up the file from yesterday um we are going to um i'm actually gonna put this in the chat hold on i haven't been doing the agendas in the chat and i really should um so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna finish the footer from yesterday that really should not take that long um, then we're gonna start the second page, which is going to be your homework, but I'm going to help you get it started. Um, so, and then <clears throat> the next thing we're going to do, which, um, I don't think I talked about, I know I said I was going to do SAS. I might just record a separate tutorial for SAS if you guys want to try to use that another time. Um, but it's just like a lot to do today. Um, so I'm going to do those two things. The third thing we're going to do is going to be um, make sure you guys have a repository in your GitHub account for your capstone project. Um, and so we're going to use GitHub desktop to create that repository for you if you don't already have one. If you already have one, then, you know, then don't worry about creating it. Uh, but if you don't have one, I want you guys to have one get set up so that when you start working on your capstone project and you have your code there, you can push it up and you have it saved off your computer just in case something happens. Um, and then after that, I'm basically gonna give you guys like a catch up day um, because next week you guys are gonna be jumping into JavaScript. So if you have any burning questions, about HTML, CSS, if you have to catch up on homework, if you wanna just like practice with something else, um, that's gonna be the rest of the class today. Um, I am gonna give you an option to stay on or leave at that point, it's completely up to you. Um, so there's that. So it's kind of like our early weekend gift, <laughs> but uh, also, you know, in two ways, you can leave if you're finished with things or you can stay if you need the extra help and we're gonna have class time to take care of that so we're not on super late after class. So um, let me just type this in the chat. Capstone. <laughs> That's funny, Carolyn. <laughs> All right. So does anybody have anything to share um, for like our stand up before we get started um, from yesterday? Anything you saw in the news? Literally anything. Um, unmute yourself and. Yeah, I was catching up on uh, giving peer review on um, uh, the capstones and um, Dominique, your front page of your Web page looks awesome. I just wanted to give you. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah. Uh, I love it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, I'm in the midst of typing it up. So I just wanted to give that to you. Yeah. Classy. That's awesome. Thank you, Corey. Anybody else? You guys are not very chatty today. I had like a small kind of a coding idea. It may already exist, but all the extensions we were talking about in uh, VS Code, mm -hmm. I was thinking it would be cool if um, there was one that made the um, bootstrap um, categories, or what's the word I'm looking for? Um, uh, the, the bootstrap classes, um, a different color than the ones you put in yourself. So you could easily identify which are yours. That may already exist, but um, 
Yeah, I thought that would be a neat feature to create. Yeah, I like that. I was exhausted on Monday and I overslept and it was late Monday for my capstone uh, presentation. Um, but um, I wanted to throw it out there if two minutes or one minute. <laughs> um, and uh, it was uh, to help um, eighth grade students work on multiplying, dividing, subtracting um, fractions and adding fractions because, you know, there's such an achievement gap in Syracuse City School District and across the country, culturally, uh, economically, um, that I have a heart for students. And um, so that's what my capstone was going to be dedicated to. Yeah, I completely understand and empathize with that, Corey. I think it's a really good idea and uh, it's a huge problem that you're trying to solve. So uh, kudos to you for trying to attack that. I um, grew up in the Syracuse City School District um, and graduated from Henniger and- God bless I, you, good job. <laughs> then I <laughs> taught in the Syracuse City School District. My old neighborhood, we'll talk. <laughs> Yep, I went to Webster, then I went to Grant Middle School, and then I went to Henniger. Um, so it was fun. <laughs> and then... Um, Where did you teach? Uh, I taught... So my undergraduate... Or my graduate degree was in early childhood and special education. So technically, my certification was birth to second. So I taught um, at a preschool called Juonio, which was... A, it's a private preschool. Um, but it's across from Nottingham actually. Um, and then I taught at Lemoyne Elementary um, in the city. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. And then I subbed, um, I did a long-term sub job before I was full-time um, while I was still in school, um, finishing my certification. I did a long-term sub job at Blodgett. Um, and then I did some student teaching at Seymour as well. Um, and then I subbed all over like Corcoran, um, Nottingham. Yep. Your face looks familiar, and I was a long-term sub. Uh, I did um, Clary, uh, Danforth, Lincoln Middle School. So I wonder if that's uh, interesting. Past lives. Probably, you might have cross paths, <laughs> like in like daily subbing jobs, maybe. Who knows? Because um, I did some of that too. And yeah. then, and then I, and then I got a job at the. Um, oh, and I love Juonio too. I love it so much. They're amazing. Um, preschool um but yeah then I got a job at uh, Syracuse Academy of Science and I was there for three years um at the mm -hmm. high school on uh West Genesee so West, yeah yeah hey, well, quick, quick announcement can you hear me yes yep. oh uh Gus is going to be joining us today he just sent a message in slack I'm sending him the link now so yeah, one, of, yeah one of you one of your instructors is, is he teaching next week He's teaching JavaScript, but I can't remember if it's next week or the week after. Okay. Here. Well, he's about to join us in a second. I'm sending him the link now. So just in case you wanted him to I'll say wait. a few words once he gets on, okay? I just sent yeah. it to him. Thank you. No problem. I'll wait and um, see if he wants to say something before we get started. So, yeah. I see a lot of you in the in the chat, Jaheel um, and Carolyn. That's awesome. And Chantina. Oh, okay. Karen, Karen said um, Gus is um, next next week and the week after. And then Max. Okay. Wonderful. I had them backwards. I thought Max was next week. Yeah. So, so Gus is next week. That's awesome. So, yay. I love Syracuse City School District, by the way. My kid goes to Syracuse City School District. Yeah, I love it, too. I, I love them. Um, I think they do a really great job trying to bridge those gaps. Uh, it's just a big gap to close. So You gap. bring a bag of candy to your classroom and use it Always. as a teacher for math. <laughs> <laughs> Always. You know what, though? When I was at the high school, my kids were always like, do you have candy, miss? I need some candy. <laughs> nope. I got apples. I got granola bars. You can come yeah. get some of that. I'm yeah. not giving you candy. <laughs> I brought, I started with the candy then, right when I was teaching uh, eighth grade math at Lincoln. And then um, I stopped at the corner store right there on, uh, I think, Burnett. Mm -hmm. And we was getting those muffins. And those were the hit <laughs> in the morning with the basketball team. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. 
I miss the kids. That was my favorite part. I loved the kids and I yeah. loved like the teachers I worked with. Um, yeah, it was just the profession that was not for me. Like yeah. all the extra stuff we had to do was just so hard. Um, so, yeah. All right, Karen. I'm just gonna double <laughs> double check and make sure that I sent him the entire. I like that comment, there. Karen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, while we wait for Gus to hop on, um, if anybody doesn't have anything else to share, uh, make sure you have your code up from yesterday, um, and make sure that you're all caught up. We got like halfway through the footer. So, um, and I did post a code in Slack in case you guys need that, but. And Susan, I will try to help you troubleshoot at the end of class and we have like that extra time um, if you want. Hi Gus. Hey Caitlin, how's it going? <laughs> Good, how are you? I'm all right. I uh, have tomorrow off, so I have a long weekend to get my material ready for uh, next week. <laughs> That's awesome. I, I had you mixed up. I thought Max was teaching next week, and then you were teaching af after Max. So Yeah, I'm taking the next two weeks, and then he's doing the two after that, I think. Yeah, that's what Karen said, too. I can't keep track. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Nice to this meet you. This is Gus. Uh, do you want to say anything? I guess, yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is a little... Sorry for barging into your class, but... Uh, Crash my name is the Gus. I'm... Uh, programmer for a long time like more than 10 years now i work at density in the tech garden in syracuse um i do all kinds of stuff javascript back end uh, databases and uh, i'll be doing the first two weeks of of javascript uh next week and it's gonna be it's gonna be fun i'm i'm uh, working on my uh presentations and uh the um activities i think the activities are going to be fun but see you uh, see you then i'm i'm just sitting in because i want to see you know how's it going i i want there to be some continuity uh you know in terms of like i don't want to just be like all right tell me what's going on so i'm trying to get a sense of that i know kind of last minute here but uh that's why i'm here good Sorry, thank you guys. <laughs> um, so we're just uh, finishing up a bootstrap project um, that we started. Uh, we're using Christy's wireframes that she uh, designed for us um, for the e-commerce pages. <clears throat> um, and so we're gonna finish that up in a second. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so I left myself a little comment. Guys, this is where we left off in our footer. Um, and let me bring up that page. I think it's this here. So we have these uh, links here is where we left off. Now, I know there was a couple people who um, had trouble getting the links to work or uh, things not showing up in the footer. Did, did anybody still have trouble with that? I know um, Susan left a comment, um, but I don't know if anybody else, sorry, I didn't mean to call you out, Susan, um, but I don't know if anybody else was having trouble still or if we can continue. Um, okay, we have like five minutes left of this code basically, and then we're gonna start the next file that you're gonna finish the homework, so. Um, um, um I was gonna say, remember yesterday I had uh, multiple headphones and or it's just, I figured all that out. I went through, I fixed, I fixed a lot of it, but things still don't quite look like the page that you're showing us. But okay. I, think, I think I'll figure it out. I'll just go ahead and do what we're doing today and I can go back. And then if I'm still stuck, I'll reach out to you. Yeah, and I will say like, we still have some styling to do of our own. So that might fix some of those weird things that you're seeing. Um, and if not, we can probably, look at that um, at the end of class and get that figured out for you. Hey, Caitlin, zoom into your code a little bit. Yep. I, have on, I have on the bad glasses tonight. 
That's okay. I'm still working on moving stuff around really quick. So just give me a second. No problem. <clears throat> All right. I think we're good now. Uh, let me just get rid of these extensions. All right. And I don't need this open. Is that too big or is that okay? That That is like giant on my screen but if it looks good for you guys i can uh deal it, it airs on the big side for me but okay. i'm good yeah if, <laughs> like, it, i can't it, see it's it little, so it's a little big yeah okay. i'll, I'll, zoom out a I'll little. go in the kitchen to look at it i'll be fine How's that? that's, one, that's, that's perfect good. that's perfect okay <laughs> we're doing good all right um okay so the the next part of this um footer so we have our three links here um and then the Where's my div? Okay, and this is closed. Um, okay, so the next part of our footer is in this next uh, div that has the call class, the column class right here. So we're underneath our link. We're gonna start in, in the next column, the right side column that was on that page. So um, in the finished one, this one, this is where we're working today. And so we have, uh, we have a heading here, and then we have a, a form like input here. So this heading looks the same as this one. Um, what did we use for the, the, the first heading? What did we do? We're gonna do it the same way. H2. H2, and the H2 was inside of um, a, a div also. Um, and so this one was called, remember we gave it this class, the footer nav heading class. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to be, I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it inside this column here. And I'm just going to call it, um, I'm just going to call it footer heading. No, that's not, see, that's not specific enough, but I'm going to leave it there for now. Um, and then I'm going to say, get the latest updates. So I just copied my code from up here because it was gonna be basically the same thing. We have a div and then an H2 inside the div. And so instead of me typing all that out again, I just copied it because we're efficient and it's not cheating. Um, I have a question. Why didn't we use an H3? Because we used a H2 class for the price. Yeah, so we're in a totally different section. So we don't need to follow. We don't, we can use another H2 here because we're in a different area now. If we oh, okay. were in the same area, then I, then I would try to follow that H1, H2, H3 pattern um, and not skip around. But for this, because we're in a separate section, you can start over if you want. So that's a good question. All, all in all, really, you could you could use a heading too, and then just style it however you want. That the heading just has like a a, a pre built kind of setting in terms of like the size of the heading. But I can go in there and change this to be like super big or super small if I want to anyway. Um, and so if you use a heading and it doesn't um, it doesn't um, fit like your style, you can still change it. So. Um, but that was a good question. Um, so if everybody is good with this, I'm going to go back over to Bootstrap and I'm going to show you the um, forms. So we used the forms um, before as well. Um, but for inputs, Basically, for a form, you should always wrap it in a form tag. Um, and so for our form, if you have any kind of like inputs that are going together, you want them in the same like form tag wrapped together because the submit button is going to submit that whole form for you. Um, and so if, if you don't have them put together, it might, it's, it's going to, it's just bad practice. So I'm gonna put a form tag here and then I'm gonna put an input here. 
Um, and I'm gonna add some other stuff to this input, um, but for now, um, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna self close it actually. <clears throat> and then um, the input is gonna be the literal input field on our page, this. And then we're gonna have a separate button that's kind of attached to it. So I'm gonna go back in here and I'm gonna say, I want a button. And I want the button to say, submit. And I'm gonna give this some classes and stuff like that too, but this is my rough uh, thing. So if I save that and I go back and I refresh, it looks really ugly, but it's there. And uh, it looks like this, the submit button, because I haven't given any, like in the input look normal because I haven't given them any like bootstrap classes. So they're not styled. They're just, this is like the generic HTML button and, and input input form, like input uh, area. I can't talk to him, so sorry. English is not working. <laughs> You're doing fine. I'm exhausted. My brain is fried. Can I ask you to do something that you did yesterday <laughs> just for the sake of focus? The area that you were working on, you just um, hit the enter key a few times just to give some uh, white space or if you will, black space. Like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yep. yeah, that's beautiful. Thank Sometimes you. Sometimes it reformats for me. So if it goes away, I'll just mm -hmm. redo it. But um, okay. it should keep it like this. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it snaps it back up and gets rid of all the space. Oh wow. Okay. Oh no. Oh no, Susan, what was wrong? <laughs> um, I had the Chrome was just like under my screen. So when I would scroll down, I couldn't see the bottom and I thought I was at the bottom of the page, but like really the bottom of the page was below my screen. Oh my God. So it was there. You just, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it still looks weird because it looks live, which I don't think it's supposed to, but it's there. <laughs> it looks what? Live. Like it's blue. Like the links are blue. Yeah, because we didn't style the links. So oh, we, okay. we can style them to be black. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, now so. I feel less crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least like, yeah, at least it's working and you like, your code wasn't messed up. It was just uh, the window. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, okay. Um, what's next? So in our, um, in Bootstrap, they have this class called input group. And I'm trying to find where it says. Um, I think it's just like they're, input group. Yeah, it just, it's just a, like their basic input styling, um, essentially. Um, I was trying to see if it said something, but it, it doesn't. Um, so I'm gonna add that input group class um, to this input. Um, and I'm gonna, I mean, do you guys, I like when my attributes are beneath each other. I don't like to look at it like that. So, so the class I'm gonna say is input dash group. And that's just gonna help style it like the, or oh, I'm on the wrong thing. Like the, um, I can't I think, like the bootstrap styles, sorry. 
I think I'm nice. Oh, sorry, guys. Um, there needs to be a div here. Um, and I'll explain in a second. Let me put it. There needs to be a div around the um, the input and the button. I'm sorry. And then what you just had in there a minute ago, the input hyphen group, was it? The, the input class? hyphen group is going to, yeah, that class is actually going to go on this div. Oh, I knew not I, in the input type text one. Okay. I'll just yeah, watch. So I just, yeah. So I put it on the wrong um, thing and then I realized I forgot to put this div here. <laughs> I'm sorry. And I can't tell you. You're fine. You're fine. Okay. That should work. I just can't find my. So I hope nobody is too confused. Um, all I did was I added a div um, around the input and the button. So they're kind of like just together like that. Um, and the, this is inside that form element that I added. So I just added an extra container basically. <clears throat> and then if I see that and I refresh, it kind of, see how like it makes, I wish I could go, let me go back and uh, don't delete this. I just wanna uh, show you something. So see how without the input group, uh, class, I don't know, can you guys see the bottom of my screen, like at all? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, yesterday there was like a weird issue with that. So um, there's like the space between the button and the input itself. Um, if I add that input group class, it, it groups that, it literally groups that input and button together visually. So it looks like that, see how it snapped together, mm -hmm. that's what that input um, group class does. Mine doesn't look like that. Yeah, so mine's not, I mean, there's a box around it, but it's not as dark as yours. Oh, I meant mine is across and then now submit is underneath. Um, we didn't, we didn't add a couple of things, so that might be why. I'm just doing that too. And I, I had the div ending before the button. So I just moved the ending tag for the div after the button and it fixed it. It's to the right. The submit button is to the oh, right. Oh yeah. So if your closing div tag is, is it has to be outside the button tag. So you need to have this button with submit and a closing button tag and then your div tag. Yeah, it's in there. Oh, okay. Uh, but we're still we're still gonna put more stuff in here. So uh, the things that we we might do might help. Um, all right. Now I'm gonna give um, a class to this input. So this should be over one. So the form control class helps to style that um, input even more. And so I gave it to the, the input itself, that class form control, form dash control, sorry. And then I'm also going to give this input an ID and it's gonna say email input. And then on the input, we're also gonna have a placeholder and the placeholder is just that text that you see in the input box before you type it in. It's a grayed out text. Um, and it's literally a placeholder that usually tells you like kind of what 
what to do with the input. Um, and so I'm gonna say, enter your email address. And then I'm going to give the input an ARIA label. That's gonna say email. I'm gonna say your email. And then um, Dana, do you know what the described by attribute does? The ARIA described by attribute does? That's much nicer. There we go. Snapped for you. I think it's supposed to be the ID of an element of another element. Yeah. I'm not okay. Yeah, it, it is. Um well it's hard like the 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 button is gonna have the same ID as the aria described by label. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Not label, the described by attribute. Sorry. It just ties them together, right? Yeah, to be honest, I just looked that up, but. I mean, that's why I'm like, does anybody know? Because I don't really remember. I just know it has to be there. <laughs> There's so much like accessibility built into Bootstrap too that like you could copy and paste these forms and they'll have like so much stuff and you customize them. You, you kind of understand what they're like, what to put there, but then you don't always know what they do necessarily. Uh, but it is for access, these ARIA labels are for accessibility, like Dana taught you. So um, they're important to have. And do we have to change some of the divs to, um, um, well, I forgot the semantic label for the blind to be able to see the, the, the important parts of the descriptors for some certain parts of the website too, right? We yeah. Like we have to do that. I'm not going to have you guys like do that if you want to try to oh, do no. you can't no, I was just like in like in like in development like professional zone like when we do our capstones that would be probably the next step if once we get the whole thing the whole web page like designed or coded mm -hmm. we would have to that would be a next step right yeah you could go through mm -hmm. and and make it more accessible for sure mm -hmm. got it okay now do developers always how to how to do developers that are like you know doing it right now for a job do they just code it initially that way or do they go back and then you know do they flesh out the idea and then make it accessible or do they do it hand in hand or it's just a mixed bag um i'd say it's kind of mixed i think like you when you're in development you try to put as much accessibility in there as you can but there's always like at the end there's a lot of like we have to do all this like ADA compliance stuff for our website. Let's go back through everything and make sure we have all the accessibility put in. And um, mm -hmm. like, you'll audit your own site often and right. see if there's capitalism. anything going on there that you need mm -hmm. to fix. Um, and so there are people that like, that's literally their job is accessibility mm -hmm. um, and compliance and stuff like that. Like they specialize in that kind of stuff. Um, well, that's a separate department in some companies. It's not, it's not, I'm not saying, no, 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 not like a separate department, but like there are people who are like very skilled at that and, and that be something that they'd be tasked with mm -hmm. doing. They might be like also a developer, but they might have like that, like a really good skill at doing that. Um, and Got so it. they could be tasked with those things. Gus, I don't know if you guys, do you guys do like accessibility or um, density we, stuff? We do to a degree, but um, I mean, the sad truth is that like businesses cut corners a lot and, and this is one of the corners that they, cut a lot actually so like it's usually something you have to go back and do later when you're forced to uh in my experience and you know you kind of wish it wasn't but uh, i'm gonna be honest that's yeah yeah okay yeah it's, it's kind of like it's tough and with the divs and stuff like you're not going to avoid divs there's like oh you, you can't avoid using them altogether. it's just not practical um they are very versatile elements um, and very like 
you can use them for a lot of different things. And so that's why you see them so much. And so like the best thing you can do at that point is to add like as many accessible tags as you can and, and things like that, because you can't just like change everything to a semantic element, but, but that is why like we did use the sections up here. I remember that. Yeah. Because I could do something accessible with those. I could make these two sections on our page. Um, and that was like an easy way to add some accessibility in there. Mm -hmm. So. We should be putting that on our capstones though, right? Um, pardon? We, we should be putting um, ADA um, tags on our capstones. Yeah, wherever you can put them, you definitely should. I would say forms are one of the biggest w places you can add um, accessibility forms, buttons. Um, mm -hmm. Your heading okay. tags can be right, right. You know, accessible. Images. Um, oh, yeah, the navigators. Navigation, like yep. Yeah, okay. yeah. so sense. there's like a lot of places you can add it in that is very helpful with, without, um, you know, having to change tags and things like that. So, um, so yeah, so the button, we're gonna add some classes to the button too. Um, and we're gonna give it, where did we have the other button? I'm sorry, before you move on with that, we had a couple of questions in the chat. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, Mel, you had a question about form, form controls. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, um, so, Gus, Gus answered the question, but it basically just, um, it, makes, it makes the form element look like bootstrap. It just changes the, the design of the element. Right, well, uh, Gus and I answered the question. But um, his question specifically, what does a form control do? Um, I, I, and I'm thinking that between our two explanations, there was one thing missing. Mel, what a form control does depend, depends on what the form control is. A checkbox is going to collect a number of different checks, whereas a radio button, you can only select mm -hmm. one. A text box will only accept text. So the list that I gave you, depending on which form control you choose will determine the behavior of it. Does that answer your question? As far as like bringing the, the explanation that Gus and I gave, does that bring it f full circle for you? Mel? Oh, hold on, he might be typing in the chat. Yeah. Oh, okay, all right, good. And then uh, Carolyn wants to know if you can bring up your code again, and you've done that. Uh, Carolyn, was there was there any place in particular? Probably right. I just, I just right needed there. to see the last few things she did so that I can yep. um, put them in my code and understand. That's all right. We're good. I just, you know, one monitor, so, but that's fine. Thank all right. You. Great. Okay. Good. All right. All right. Um, so for the button, we're going to do something similar to the button we did up top. Um, if you guys look at your code up there, um, buttons are super simple. You just give it a class of button, but it's the, okay, maybe I can't, there we go. Um, and then you mm -hmm. tell it what style button you want. So that if you go to bootstrap and look at their buttons, remember they have like all the colors where it's like BTN dash success, BTN dash mm -hmm. danger, BTN dash primary. Um, so you can choose any of those. I'm going to choose success, which is a green button. And I'm choosing success because for this purpose, we are asking somebody to submit their email address and then sign up for a newsletter. And so that's like, a, it's a call to action button and they're submitting something. And so I want to use that green button. Green's also used sometimes for like payment and stuff like that. Um, and so I don't think, I think, I don't know if Christy went over color theory for that type of stuff. I don't remember. She talked about a lot of stuff, uh, but there's like in design, there are certain colors that you should avoid or use for like specific things or like things that are commonly seen for specific things. Blue and green are like common ones for CTAs like this. Um, and so that's all I'm gonna do there. I'm gonna refresh and now it looks like that and it's going all the way across, which I don't like, but we can fix that. There's actually also no, no type of like spacing down here. So we're gonna style our footer a little bit too.
I was noticing that um, on your model, it doesn't like there's a little bit more space between the contact and the email address. I was looking for a different flex property and the bootstrap stuff to do yeah. that. Is it just padding? Is that what it is? Um, between between these like links and this section, this area here, you mean? Yeah, when it's more stretched out into non-mobile. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, um, I, I believe, let me just check. I got to cheat for a second. I styled my footer and I styled the footer navigation in the style.css, which we're going to do right now, actually. Yeah, cool. So um, because there, I didn't like that there was like, no space there. I actually just gave that footer nav. We have a, where is it? Here, that class that we created ourselves. That's not a bootstrap class, a camel case one. Um, if I go to my style of CSS, I'm going to make a new section. I'm going to leave a comment. I'm going to say, footer and this just helps me organize my CSS if I'm just using one file. Um, typically when I use like SAS or something, I have separate files for separate things so that things are kind of like all together. Um, at work, our code is uh, co-located, which means that like a, com a component um, or a, a, a part, a feature or whatever, and its styles are all located in the same folder together. Um, and it just helps you find what you need a lot faster. It's just more efficient to um, fix bugs, um, add features and things like that. So um, that's called co-located code. And so I would, if this CSS style sheet was bigger, I would break this up into multiple style sheets and um, do it that way instead, because I don't want to scroll a thousand lines of CSS to find. Mm. So, um, so the footer, um, I'm going to give the footer also some padding because it's super close to the bottom of the page. So the footer itself, I'm just going to target the element because we only have one footer on our page. I'm going to say padding 20 pixels and I want it all the way around the footer. So it's nice and like kind of like towards the center a little more and not squished to, to the outside of the page or the bottom of the page. And then the footer nav class. I'm going to do something similar to what I did up here with like the button and the quantity when we had the other form there. Um, but for the footer nav, I'm going to give it a max width, which means I only want it to take up a maximum amount of space in its parent container. And I'm going to say only take up 80% of that space maximum, no more than that. And then if I save that, and I close this and refresh. It snapped kind of like, see how we have a bit more space here. Now I could definitely add more mar more padding or margin on the bottom um, if I wanted to, which I probably should, but it looks a little bit nicer at least now. Not so squished together. And if I... Uh, to add more padding with the footer, you would just bump it up to 90 then maybe? Um, yeah, if you, mm -hmm. or okay. wait, uh, yeah, here. Yeah. yeah, I could do, I'll give you like 50 pixels if I wanted to um, and refresh and that would be super squished here. But here it looks okay. And there it looks okay. So you kind of got to mess with it and see, um, there's a lot of ways you could, you, you could do this too. I could just add margin on the bottom if I wanted to as well. So I could put this back at 20 and then I could say margin bottom and I could do like, uh, I could do like 50 pixels just on the bottom of margin and refresh. And then it pulls it up off the bottom of the page more, but it doesn't mess with like, um, how it looks on mobile. Mm -hmm. So it still looks decent here and it's just pulled up from the bottom of the page more. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and we're, we're,
pretty much done with this. Are you gonna um, target the button to be like, I don't know, 50% width in style CSS? Um, so the button um, has, it's already like attached to this like input here. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a group. Um, and so I could make the button bigger, but I want the email address box to be longer here because I want people to be able to like see what they're typing. So I left the button smaller here. If you want to mess around with it and change how big or small that is, I think you you can do that. You can target, you can give no, that. I did. I was just wondering if it was like wise to do that or not. I already went ahead and did that on my code. Yeah, it's a personal preference there. Just experiment and see see what you like and what, ha what happens. There's nothing wrong with that. So we're done with this page. We finished the whole page in Bootstrap. And it really only took like one class because if you subtract the time we spent earlier yesterday in class and then like a little bit of time today, it didn't take that long. So you guys did awesome. And so I'm gonna get you started once everybody's caught up with all of this. Um, it looks like everybody's pretty good with this code. Um, I'm gonna get you started with the second file, but you're gonna finish it for homework on your own or get as far as you can. Um, and so does somebody need the code? <laughs> Thanks, Alina. <laughs> Uh, where are the wireframes? I'm gonna stop sharing for a second, sorry. The subtitles are getting in my way and I couldn't turn them off. <clears throat> All right, so this page Let me zoom in. Is the one you guys are gonna do for homework? Um, I would say I can add this into the um, assignment um, because we didn't touch. Like you can you can do the filter things, the filter drop downs if you'd like. Um, what I would like you to try to focus on is obviously the navigation. We already have that. We're gonna copy and paste that from our code that we just wrote and stick it in the other page because then it'll look the same. Um, and that's super easy. And that's gonna get you started on your next page. And then the next thing um, you need to do is you need some sort of container here. Um, you need a some sort of like text here that says like results. Um, you can just type that in and make that up. Um, you need a search box with a button. So very similar to what we just did with the email. Um, and then the rest of the page, so if you want to do the filters, you can do the filters, but the rest of the page is these cards. And so the cards are part of Bootstrap. They're a component Bootstrap. You can choose the image that you want. There's, uh, it has a button, it has a title, it has some text. Um, so that's kind of given to you you just have to figure out how to use those um so you have all these cards here and then you have your footer again so this page you... sorry go ahead no no go ahead i was going to ask if you wanted us to um basically create our own images and then link them yes if you that's actually really good um Save a couple different images if you want. Um, you can reuse them. You don't need to have like 12 different images, um, but save a couple, make an images folder, put them in there. And I will update the homework with these uh, tips and instructions for you um, as well, just so you have them written down. But um, do the images folder when you have your cards, you know, put the images in the cards like we did with the, um, sorry the headphones and the thumbnails. And uh, that's pretty much it. So it's it shouldn't be too difficult because basically you're reusing the same component multiple times on this page. 
Um, if you want to, like, I think if you want to add other things, if you want to do it a little differently, feel free, but the wireframe has these 12 images here. Um, you could do eight, you could do, it, it doesn't matter, but the, you're going to code this whole page. So if you want, um, I can help you guys get started. Oh, and the other thing I did put in the homework was link. If you can link this page in the project so that if I click like on a link up here, for example, like if I click on search up here, I, it can bring me to the page with all the cards on it. Does that make sense? So can try to that one more time. Together. Um, when you're done coding that page, try to link your two pages together um, by using this link up here, like the search link or, or the cart link, whatever, I would say search. Um, use the search link to link the page that you're going to create this wireframe in. Oh, um, would, you, would you link it in style CSS or? Oh, so not like a, not like a link, like a style sheet, like a clickable link that has an href and you want that, that to point somewhere. Oh, okay. I was just making sure. I don't, yeah. I don't know why I didn't think oh, of that. I probably would have figured it out like later on when I was coding. Like I'll give you like, so here, see so you have a, like an A tag and it has this href. Mm -hmm. I could put a, I could put an actual like URL there or I could do something like search dot HTML. And if that file is in my folder structure over here, it will oh. link it just like when we did the images here. Oh, okay. That gotcha. makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So you're linking it. You're literally linking it. Um, Take the search button and link to the wireframe. Mm -hmm. The link to the page that you're going to create. Yep. Based on the wireframe. So I will add all these additional things. In the and room. back the other way, the two pages should link to each other, right? Yes. Yep. And you can link your one that you're going to create back to the home page or back to the the product page will be the home page, mm -hmm. I think. but yeah. Okay. Make sense? Oh yeah. Link it however you want. Change the name. It's, 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 it's as clear as blur. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Thanks, Carolyn. <laughs> That's not your fault. I'm just like, okay, how do we do this? It's so much easier when you have the code <laughs> and yeah. you can understand what the code says, but then when yeah. it's like, make this do this and it's like, uh, <laughs> and that's why we're doing this exercise. So, okay, yeah. I mean, it's, no, you're wonderful. I'm just foggy. Okay, fair. It is, <laughs> but it's so much more satisfying when you figure it out yourself and you make it, it work. It's just yeah. like, I yeah. agree. Well said. I agree. Hence the woot woot oh. in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So, um, yeah, I mean, I can walk you guys through creating that file really quick if you want, if that's helpful for you and getting that file. You want. Yes. What? <laughs> I said, yes, we would appreciate that very much. All right, so I'm gonna be in my main project, this main uh, project folder. It's still gonna be day one dash two. We, we just used it for like all four days, but that's fine. Um, and I'm gonna click new file. So it's in the same level as my index.html and my style.css. Make sure it's on the same level. Otherwise, your linking will not work. Um, so I'm going to call it search.html. And, and it's there. It's going to be in alphabetical order, but um, it doesn't matter. So then I'm going to start this HTML file the way I always start an HTML file with all my basic HTML and head information. So <clears throat> I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna change the title here to search. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna say search. I'm gonna save that. And what was that shortcut again? Uh, it's exclamation. And then you can press enter. Oh, enter. Okay. I, you're welcome. Would we create a, oh, never mind. Never mind. I was going to ask if you wanted us to create like another file for cart and stuff, but um, 
Um, you can do, I'm sure you don't care if we do that. Listen, if you do the cart, that's fantastic. Um, I'd be super happy. If you get done with this really quick and you want to try to do the cart wireframe, you can do that. Um, I didn't put it in the homework assignment because they didn't want to be too overwhelming. Um, but I would love if you guys tried to do the cart page as well and submitted that in your homework. I think that's really good practice actually, but I'm not going to require it. Originally, I hoped that we would get through um, like all of the first page and most of this page together um, because this page is pretty quick once you get the cards in. Um, but so the third page, actually the card page was gonna be homework, but I switched it because we didn't get to this one yet, so. <clears throat> and then in my body tag, in my body of my page, I'm gonna have the same header as I did before. Uh, because I want my pages to look the same. That header and that footer um, are going to be exactly the same on both pages because your website's going to be cohesive like that, right? Like when you go to a website, it doesn't have a different header and a different footer on every page. They're the same. Those are like reusable parts of, of the web page where they get used over and over and over again on every page. Um, so I'm going to take my header tag and I'm going to cheat again and I'm going to copy it and paste it in the new file. And actually, we didn't do something, but I'm gonna let you guys figure out what we didn't do yet. Create a folder for it. Link the style sheets. We didn't like any of our style sheets, so it looks like doo-doo. <laughs> 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 so go ahead and do that on your own. You guys can link your style sheets. And don't forget that uh, script tag as well, or the, or the button doesn't work on the nav. I'm gonna let you guys do, do those links really quick. I'm not gonna show you how to do that. I'll let you guys do that on your own. What buddy? All right, everybody doing okay? We're almost done with this. Um, and then what else did I say we were gonna do? Forgot already. That's why I put it in chat. <laughs> oh, uh, GitHub repo. Capstone thingy, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah, and then we'll have time to uh, finish things up and if you have questions if you want to hang out and, and catch up on homework before you get into javascript next week i also put your agenda in slack so oh. i yeah i know the chat gets kind of long so maybe it, it would be easier just to switch windows i copied it somewhere else too i just okay it's lazy to go look no, <laughs> I was no, trying to no remember. problem It's actually, I have a Google Doc that I put it in, but. Okay. Well, that's clear. I like that. Thank you. Good. What? No, I just read the Slack page and I saw oh. the bullets. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Thank you. No problem. Mm. Looks better. So we can go get to work and catch up? Um, I'm going to do one more thing, Corey, before oh, okay. I let you guys um, go do any of that. Um, and that is the capstone thing. So if everybody is 
good with this and you're all set up and ready to go for your homework, um, I'm gonna switch gears if there's no opposition. And we can revisit this too um, afterwards, but I wanna get the capstone repos set up. Um, so, uh, can, I'm gonna do, let me do a poll really quick. Stop sharing. Um, sorry guys. Give me one second guys, I'm sorry. All right, screw this, that's fine. Uh, if you guys already have, I'm just, I was trying to do poll back to login and I don't, I can't find the, the thing for the hack up state stuff. So uh, if you already have a repository for your capstone, just give me a quick, quick thumbs up. If you don't, you don't have to do anything, but if you do just a quick thumbs up. Uh, repository in GitHub. Okay, one, two, three. Maybe. <laughs> so, so, okay, so most of us do not, so that's okay. Um, so if you still have your GitHub desktop open or uh, installed, we're gonna use that to create the repository because it's just uh, a bit simpler. Excuse me, Caitlin. Mm -hmm. Is there a way for me just to check real quick? Like if I just go to my GitHub? Will yeah, I so yeah. If you go to your GitHub and um, if you know what you would have called it, um, it'll just be there. Okay. Um, so yeah. Um, I'm not sharing my screen, I forgot. So. so. If I go to my uh, GitHub profile, these are all my repositories that I have in here. There's a bunch of random stuff in here that I haven't touched in a very long time. Um, but yeah, your your capstone repository would show up like in a list like this on your GitHub profile. You did have them, so. <laughs> Karen mentioned that, uh, let's see, Kyle. Kyle seemed to be a bit excited about her code. <laughs> Was there something that you wanted to share? Are you taking shares right now, Caitlin? Yeah, sure. Oh, okay. Um, All right, Kyle. <laughs> Well, I was just happy that I got the link to work. I realized that rather than um, opening the file in, like once I put the link for the index, um, the you know, and the header there to the new page that I created, the search page that we were setting up, I realized in order to preview it in the um, the browser, I didn't need to go into the folder in my finder. I could just click the link on the page I was already on, like previewing, and I oh. went to it. it was, yeah. <laughs> So, well, congrats. 
The small victories lead to bigger <laughs> ones. So everybody has used GitHub once before, and this is the second repository we're making? Yeah, so Max had them do um, a personal site and get it on GitHub pages. Cool. Um, yeah, and they also um, have been pulling down like the teacher uh, code, the instructor code base. Um, so they have access to that one, but not obviously pushing to that one. Um, and some of them have their um, my code folders, which is like the code that they're working on in class. They have some of some people have those connected to GitHub as well. So, oh, cool. Yeah. Um, and I guess we should talk through stuff tomorrow. But is everyone using VS Code? Is everybody using it? Yes. Yep. Okay. Everybody's using VS Code, and we did um, switch. Cool from Git Kraken to GitHub Desktop because Git Kraken uh, just was giving us a bit of trouble. Um, okay. It was a bit too too much, I think. For, I use GitHub Desktop for work. I, yeah. It does GitHub what you Desktop was, was better, yep. Cool. So Caitlin, you're viewing, when you were viewing on your GitHub view on the web page of it, um, you were looking at your repositories or your projects? Repositories. Okay. Yeah. Because I was looking at it, I was trying to find it in this GitHub desktop. And, oh no, there's a web page. Okay. Um, yeah. Ten steps behind myself. I also made a few changes to um, Visual Studio Code to make it better for me, but I need to kill a couple because it's like out of mind of its own with formatting. <laughs> oh. <laughs> He's putting in double quotes, and then I go to get rid of one, and it deletes both of them. And then it puts it. Well, nuts. So I'm going to fix it later. All right. Anyway. All right. So my next question is uh, thumbs up if you already have a folder with code in it for your capstone on your desktop. It doesn't have to be in GitHub, just a folder with like some code or anything in it. Okay. So a couple people do, but most people don't. That's fine. So what we're going to do, if you already have a folder, you can skip the making a folder step of this um but you're going to need to know where that folder is and what it's called for the second step um so just keep that in mind so um on your desktop or wherever you want this folder to be you can put it in like if you have like a regular cic folder um i don't think i have like a regular cic folder but here's my like my folder that contains the classroom code base and the my code folder. If you want to stick your capstone project within this parent folder that is probably just called CIC for you guys, um, you can go ahead and do that. But you're going to make a new folder and you can just title it capstone um, if you want. Or if you have a name for your project, you can use the name for your project. But I'm just going to do capstone mm -hmm. so that everybody can kind of follow that. Um, mm -hmm. but you can name that whatever you want. And this can go in the parent folder that has, let me just actually change this. So I have a CIC folder. This is the code I'm not supposed to touch. This is my code. And then I'm going to have my capstone folder. We also have our website folder in there. And you, yes, you probably also have your website folder in there too. That's a good point. So I'm just going to do like a, I'm just going to say github.io just for the sake of simplicity here. So your, your folder might look something like this now once you add the capstone folder. Uh, Caitlin, can you hear me? Mm-hmm. I'll put a, a screenshot of this uh, recommended folder structure into into Slack. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Oh, so the CIC my code is actually would be our folders where we put my code into. Is that right? Then it's separate for the capstone. Yep. That's so so you would say these are on the same 
same level structurally. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I can. Uh... So right now there's nothing in the capstone, right? We haven't gotten beyond just creating it. Correct. Right? So this is my desktop. Mm -hmm. Then I have a folder called CIC. And then, sorry, it went back. And then I have these four <laughs> folders inside my CIC folder, which includes mm -hmm. the classroom code base, my code, your GitHub.io folder, and now your capstone is the oh, one you want to add. I don't have a oh, GitHub.io folder. Okay. This is the one you made with Max that would have like your name. I, uh, well, that's I, fine. It, it, I have to see if I can find it. Well, we <laughs> bought that thing. Bought that. Um... Yeah. So, Carolyn, if you don't have this folder, don't worry about it. But oh, uh, yeah, I'm not worried. <laughs> I'm trying to keep your your folders organized here. Mm -hmm. my brain waves have stopped. So that makes it easier. <laughs> yeah, so it'll make it easier for you to find your capstone, and this is also going to be connected to GitHub for you, but separate mm -hmm. from all of these because it's its own project. Does that right. make sense? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Whenever we're ready, just give me a thumbs up. If you're ready to continue. If you have your capstone folder, you know where your project folder is if you already had one. Awesome. All right. So I'm gonna keep going and then if anybody gets stuck, we can we can backtrack a bit. So you have this folder here. You need to open up your GitHub desktop application. Mm -hmm. And mine opened on another screen. So give me a second. And there, it should not appear there yet, correct? Yeah, I, I opened it on another screen by accident. So no, I mean on my GitHub screen, I should not see it there yet. No, no that folder won't be there. Very um, good. So far, so good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm understanding the concept. All right. Um, and you can go to file and you can click, uh, what did you, I did new repository, I believe. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then I can choose where I want that repository to like live on my computer. So I want it to be in my desktop, my CIC folder, and I'm gonna click that capstone folder that I made. So if ours is already there, would you want us to clone it just to make sure it's already there or? I think I already completed this stuff. I just wanna double check. Do you already have your, your capstone, so your capstone project has a folder in your and it's already connected to GitHub? Yes. Oh, then yeah, you have to do that. Okay, just double check. No, so I'm in GitHub desktop. I go up to the GitHub menu. Yep. New yeah, repository. File new repository. And then I get a dialog box where you call this and create a new repository and I have to name it again because it doesn't know it exists. Yeah. So this name repository name is going to be what it's called in GitHub. It's not going to know it's not going to know what your folder is called yet because you didn't you didn't connect them. But I can call it the same thing. Yeah, you yep, you can call it the same oh, thing. I don't, I don't remember doing this part before. It's been a while, so I thought okay, great. Yeah, that's Go okay. The local path. And then if our description say CIC capstone and then you can do whatever you want in there. You can describe, you know, put the actual name of your project if you want, it's up to you. And then I'm gonna come down here where it says local path. I'm gonna click choose. And I'm gonna tell it what folder I want GitHub to put this mm. code, put this repository in. Got so it. this part is really important. And so do not mess this up or you're gonna have to delete your repository and start over again because if, you're, if GitHub connects to the wrong folder, then that's gonna get really confusing for you. Yeah. So make sure that folder we just created that's capstone or the one you already had for your capstone project is the folder that you choose for this step. Cause that's the folder you want to connect to GitHub so that any code you put in that folder can talk to GitHub and get pushed or pulled uh, as Git does. 
I'm just I'm noticing just... something we were talking about last night. Well, somebody has a question. I'll let them go first, and then oh, before we submit it, so we me. don't want it in CIC code. You don't want it in your my code folder. You're going to want it in a separate capstone folder, correct? So, oh, so it can be in CIC code. I don't know CIC how are your my code. Right. Yes. However, your folders are structured, they right. might be similar to exactly the same. I have a separate folder I made that I called something else. It's just a catch all for everything except doing the code I where think. I keep like, you know, documents and notes and things, but we do <clears throat> want it in the CIC code folder, just yeah. not in my code and obviously not in the classroom. Thing. Correct. Oh. Yep. Okay. Yes, that's correct. You're right. I got it. All right. <laughs> Your folder is just named different than mine. So that's probably where they I see. Yeah, instead of just CIC, I have something else I made, but that has nothing to do with the code. Yeah. Right. Okay. So CIC code has careers and code and CIC my code. And now I want to add it to there. Okay. All right. All right. So I'm going to use that folder that I just made. That's going to have my capstone code in it. Do we initialize it with a readme? Uh, nope, you don't have to. You'd ignore none and license none. We just create it. <laughs> yeah. That was what I was just going to talk about is that get ignore drop down menu. You were trying to help me create a file to do that, to get rid of the DS store things oh. that are accumulating in VS code. Such a nuisance. Yeah, but I don't know. These are like specific get ignored templates, I think. Um, okay. I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't know what any of these okay have inside of them so i'm gonna say no and you can just make okay. it get ignore file um, yeah mine didn't work so maybe you can help me with that later or somebody can help me with that later but um i just thought it was oh look there's an option here <laughs> yeah it would be nice yeah. careful what you click on there because i uh <laughs> it kind of is like a frankenstein's monster sometimes it takes on a life of its own so i'm gonna it's create this repository place. now all right so create repository and there she is. And I have so nothing in it, but it's my... there. <laughs> so if I go to GitHub, um, yes, <laughs> I, I'm just getting there. Hold on. If I go to... Oh, because my brain is like stuck in a thought too. And I'm... if I go to get, I do that a lot. Uh, it's it's not going to get better. Trust me. And where is it? So I have. Oh, I have to click. Uh, yeah. I okay. have um, listed I'm kind of like a main directory or user, I guess. I, my, I used Grace Hopper WW2 for World War II as my GitHub name because she was a real cool dude, lady and did lots of coding. And so under that, I have the CIC My Code. And then I've got the Grace Hopper thing, GitHub IO. Oh, there it is. That's the web. The, our own website we were having fun with. Then Hack Up State is the careers and code classroom code base. Then the capstone CAS for my initials mm -hmm. um, is in other. Do I, can I name that something better than other? Uh, I don't, I, I guess I don't understand what, where the other is coming from. When you, after you create your repository. Yeah, I was just gonna Say one thing you have to publish the repository first before you go to github.com and github.com. Maybe that's why, yeah, I'm just, I'm in the desktop looking. Okay. All right. I just. And um, you don't have to, you don't have to do, make it private. Um, okay. Ask me that. Oh, I see. I'm looking at the publish. You know what? It's really dark on my screen. And it's like, I didn't even notice that box or that button. <laughs> so I can go ahead and click on public repository. Help Gus. No. Yes. Hold on. Sorry. It's okay. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Why is it yelling at me, Gus? I'm going to be honest, this is not my strength. Um, Gus, do you know why it's telling me I have bad credentials when I'm trying to publish it? Networking. Um, not really, but... Um, it means your credentials I are have, bad, okay? That's pretty clear. <laughs> so 
I never start repositories in this client. I always do it on github.com. Really? And then clone it. Yeah. I mean, but maybe I should have done that instead. I've never done it this way either, but can you, so can you close like out of this uh, publish window, go to, go to the current repository drop down there. You want and, us to do that too, or just? Oh, look? why is I, it? I don't know whether this is going to work. So just. We'll wait. Okay. We'll, we're, we're bear with us here. Um, try in that ad drop down there. Yeah. Can you do clone repository? And does that show you a list of anything? Hmm. Refresh this list. So you have no repositories on github.com. Is that right? No, it's not right. I do, but okay. I haven't it's linked good. all of them in GitHub desktop. So I don't know if that's. Yeah, but they should, out. it should be able to pull them in if you're, mm -hmm. if you, if you're logged in correctly, can you go to the preferences for the, the program? Yeah. What the heck? I'm so confused. <laughs> Try signing out and back in. I mean. All right, hold on. No, pull the plug out. <laughs> Yeah. Stop sharing real quick so I can sign in. We we do have a number of students reporting that they've had success with this step. Uh, it might just be the button. That's good. I'm glad people can get it to work. It might just be mine, my credentials. Name. Yeah, that. Yeah, that's funny that the directions that you give work for everyone else except, except the person who's okay. giving. Yeah. And do we want to keep it pri the code private? It just works. No, no you right. don't need to keep it private. Because we want to um, share it with faculty and stuff if they, all right. Yeah, uh, that worked, Gus. I don't know what the heck was, it was Boom. like tripped out, like, I don't know, whatever. I don't know if anyone's ever seen the IT crowd. It's a British <laughs> comedy show. Yes. That's a punchline they keep saying, have you tried turning it off and on again? <laughs> That's I mean, it works sometimes. It works Most sometimes. Of the time. <laughs> windows, close windows. Um, so then what do we do? So that's it. Um, then you have now. So now what you could do in theory, let me let me show you. Um, let me minimize. I'm not sharing my screen, am I? Hold on. Sorry. Oh my God. I'm still not good at this, like, juggling screen thing. Um, I'm, I'm trying to do it all on one now, so I hear you. <laughs> um, all right. So I don't want this either. Get out of here. Um, so what I can do is I can open this. Nope, I can't. I'm gonna yell. It's too small to see. It's okay. I'm gonna open it in Visual Studio Code first. Hold on a second. Okay. That's all I'm doing. I'm just opening my uh, folder. I don't want to miss this part of the movie. I got popcorn and everything. <laughs> uh, all right. So if I create a file in here and I say uh, index.html and it doesn't like me, and it's going to go slow. And then I do another file. It's called style.css. OK, and now you see I have some changes over here. I have two changes. I'm going to stage them. I'm going to say first commit. Make that a little bigger, please. Yep. Thank you. Perfect. So I, I made two changes. I staged them. I'm going to commit them. I can see um, on my main branch in my repository now. That means I'm connected to GitHub in this folder that I'm in. So if I commit that and then I push. And then I go back to GitHub. My refresh. Here's my capstone folder repository. And I just did a first commit 20 mm. seconds ago. So now any code you do for your capstone you can stage your changes, you can commit them and you can push them to this repository and they'll be saved on GitHub for you so that you won't lose any of your work in case your computer decides to hate you or uh, oh. die or whatever. Um, can you go back to staging it one more time? 
saving it in VS Code? Yes. So um, let me make another file. I don't know. I don't know. I have normalized CSS. Make a readme. There's sure. no readme. All right, I'll make a readme. Hi. Do we need the readme? Because I remember Matt said that we didn't really need it, so I deleted it out of my capstone. So they basically, they say make a readme because um, if you have no files at all in your repository, it won't, you know, you can't do certain things that, you know, you won't be able to like uh, commit to it. So you need at least a file. That's why they say make the readme. So if you have mm. other files, you it don't really hurt anything. Oh, okay. Yeah. Was, well, I have I like the, anyway. in mine, I have um, get, get attributes, readme index HTML normalized CSS and yeah. style CSS so far. For your capstone, fun. if you make a readme for a capstone, you can put a description of your capstone in the readme file. Mm -hmm. Get attributes mm -hmm. come from? Get? Um, I, yeah, I was going to say, I don't know. <laughs> you like, actually went to get, there. you got them from get? <laughs> just, it just gets it for you. <laughs> get, you get the attributes from get? Uh, <laughs> all right, so, so staging, Alina. Uh -huh. um, I can go to this like changes tab in my um, get icon here. I can stage everything. So if I have like multiple changes, I can just say like, yeah, add them all, like just add them all at the same time. Or I can go and do each one individually at work. This is what I do because I look at the diffs, which is the changes that I make. And I just make sure and verify that like my diffs match what I actually mm. did. And I didn't accidentally type anything or delete anything that I didn't want to. Um, so I usually do my files one by one, but you're going to click the add button. And if you hover, it'll say stage changes. So that's how you know that's the stage button. And then after you stage it, you have to type a message in here for your commit. So I'm going to say added readme file. Oh, okay. <clears throat> and then this check mark is going to be my commit button. So after I have this message, this is the same, this button is the same as saying get commit dash M with a message. Um, so if you did it in the terminal, that's what you would, you would write. And then I would just um, pull and push it, right? Yep. And um, if it's just you working on the project, you generally don't need to pull, but it's good practice. So it doesn't hurt. Um, so if I commit that and then I can do a pull and there's no changes and then I can do a push and um, remember your arrows at the bottom of the screen are going to give you clues like so if you have this arrow going up with a one that means you have a commit that's that's ready to go out but you haven't pushed it yet and if you have if you do like a fetch or something um, and you have like this arrow here uh, it's going to have like an arrow with a number next to it. Maybe it has like a four next to it or something. That means you have changes that need to come into your project locally that you don't have yet. Those are going to be pull changes. So I have one commit that's waiting to be pushed. So if I push, that one at the bottom is going to go away. And now we're all up to date. There's nothing coming in and there's nothing going out. I have a and the new information is what you did on the re README screen. That's what you pushed up. Yes, I just pushed the README file. What I did. So, how do you find um, the repository if when you first go into Visual Studio Code? I've been working on something else in there, so I closed all that stuff out. <laughs> yep. So, if you go to, um, I'm going to close this. If I go to file, I don't have a menu on my actual application. I have to use the Max menu. Yeah, that's what you should use. That's the menu okay. for the application. So it's going to say file open. Okay. And then um, wherever you created that folder, it's going to have another one inside of it that GitHub created. And so oh. the, the folder you created here is like a parent folder. And then the folder inside of this is the one that's actually connected to GitHub. So you wanna open it on this level inside your capstone folder that you typed. Oh, so maybe you should name them a I little differently. Them. Yeah, so you, that's exactly. So if you titled this one capstone and then you have like uh, the specific name of your project for your GitHub repository, it would be a little easier to tell the difference. But 
the one that's inside here is the one that's connected to GitHub. So oh. since we already published it and everything, is it too late to change the name of it? Um, that's I don't I've never changed the name of a repository after the fact. Because I, I called but I'm not sure. Okay, well, you know what? I'll just make the um top level, I'll make it, I'll drop my initials off, and that's good enough. All right. Yeah, you can do that. Gotcha. I feel um, like I have another question. It's VS yeah. Code related. Um, so you know when you go to, I guess I think it's called the branch icon. I'm not really sure. It's the one under the um magnify glass. I noticed that there's like different letters sometimes. Is there like a cheat sheet how we can know what the letters oh, are? Yeah. Oh, we're next to like the file. right now. It's what? The next the the one down the branch one. I'm yeah, doing. but I don't have any changes, so it won't show up. Oh, okay. Well, mine is like an M right now. An M means modified. If you hover over it, it'll say it at the end of the file name. A U is untracked, which means like you just made it, so it's not tracked in GitHub yet. Okay. Uh, D is deleted. Uh, okay. That's pretty much I have one other question, because I wanted to save the code that we coded yesterday and tonight into GitHub, mm -hmm. and... I thought that I originally did after last night's class, but after we moved all of our files around just now, now it says that it's like in parentheses deleted. I mean, I can still I still have the code on my screen. Yeah. So it, if you move a file, GitHub is gonna think it it got deleted and then recreated because you if you moved it from one place to another place, it's basically saying like you deleted it from this location. And then you added a file in this location. It's just like canceling it out. Well, um, then do I have to go like relink it or reclone it or whatever? Um, no. Sorry. But then it's lost, no? As long as it's in the same folder that's connected to GitHub and you just moved it around inside of that, that connected folder, then it should be fine. Oh, okay. Yeah, you should still be able to push those changes to GitHub and it'll just like reorganize for you. Okay, just double check because I didn't want it to be deleted so I can look back at my code and of course use it for homework tonight. Yeah, if it's on your screen, then it's definitely not deleted. Any other questions about this one? Does everybody have their folder connected to GitHub now for their capstone? Not yeah. quite. <laughs> I'll figure it out. We can, uh, we can, that's okay. We have time. So, so here's the point in class where if you want to bounce early and like get some homework done, um, feel free. If you want to turn your camera off and just hang out and listen while you do homework, that's fine too. Um, I'm not doing any like instruction right now. We're just going to be troubleshooting and helping out here, um, making okay. sure you guys are all like up to date and ready to go. Um, okay. What you um, need. So, so I'm going to desktop. In CIC code, I have a capstone folder. And then I have a repository that I made, capstone CAS, but that isn't showing up in my finder. Can you share your screen? It's kind of hard to follow the file structure in my head. Mm, bah, 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 bah. All right, so here's. Uh, go away. All right, so, so I have the desktop CIC code capstone. And there should be a repository in here, capstone CAS, unless I missed a step. So wait, um, that CIC code is a folder? Why does it look like that? Oh, I changed the icon on it. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. I've got, no, no, I've got, um, that's actually a picture of Grace Hopper. And then this one that I made just for my own, whatever. That's is, all um, stuff. Is daffodils. And then the one that's classroom code has a stop sign on it. Oh my gosh. You, you stole the in my folders heart. all look the same. And that way I know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So go back to your CIC code. That's cool. I'm an uh, icon changer. You stole in my heart. So... <laughs> You're iconic. All right. Oh, so go to but your GitHub has to create it for it to appear here. No, so go to your capstone folder. 
Okay, so you didn't. Can I created a repository and I published it, and that's as far as I got. Uh, go to see. I see my code. Hmm. Yeah, all this is happy. It didn't do anything weird. Yeah, that's fine. I just wanted to check and see if it got clicked on by mistake. Uh, I don't know. I don't make mistakes only ninety nine percent of the time. <laughs> go, to, go, to, go to GitHub Desktop. Uh, oop, 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 that's digital studio code. Behave yourself. All right. I can't find it. It's not there. But we published it. And it acted like it was happy. Um, can you go to your GitHub? Oh, wait a minute. Let's see what the, oh, the path. See, because I what I connected was the folder. Yeah, you changed the that name. Of I renamed to just Capstone because we're supposed to have the repository in that folder. This is that I was going to rename Capstone CAS. Right. So can I change the name? <clears throat> uh, well, it looks like it got mad at you because it didn't know where to find it. Um, well, click on I, locate. I can thought when we made the Capstone folder and then I named it Capstone CAS that that was the repository. Yeah. So that it wasn't a folder in which the repository would go. Yeah, yeah. Well, but it is. It's the folder. Yeah, that's fine. I understand the. But, um, but what? But I mean, what does it need to be? Is it, it needs to be the two levels? It's going to be two levels. Yes. Okay. That's all right. So it can't find it. So should I remove it? Nope. I'm trying to tell you to click on locate, and then click on the capstone folder and click on open. It's okay, so it's there. So now try to go back to your finder and see if it popped up. Mm, it's still not there. Interesting. Oh, well maybe so you don't have a folder inside of this. This is your repository now. I think that's the problem. So should yours doesn't. Yours is not nested like mine. Should it be? Um. It doesn't matter as long as this one's connected to GitHub. Because I mean, there so, was a folder there. So try something for me. So go to um Visual Studio Co Code. I'm oh, sorry. Oh. Go we're going to try to make a change. We're going to make a, we're going to create a file and we're going to push it and see what happens. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure that's just your repository and you don't have a folder inside of it. That's all. All right, here we go. And it was confused because you renamed the desktop folder, the folder that it was. So it didn't know where to look. Yeah, that. I had two named Capstone CAS and then it got, and it's, it's in the trash. I could put it back. No, it's okay. Let's, let's see. But don't erase your trash yet. No, I, I'm not. I'm not going to empty it till you guys wipe my machine clean. So open the capstone folder. Click open. Yeah, that's your GitHub repository right there. It has the Git file. So add a file really quick. Um, you can add a README if you want. Um, um, and then just type something inside of that. Is it like a dot something or just read me? No, it's just read me. Hey, Caitlin. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> Gus is in um, breakout. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. So um, he put it up in the chat and um, said, hope, uh, hopefully that's okay. And said oh, yeah, that's that, um, fine. Okay, then. And um, wants other students to know that he's there and they're welcome to join. Awesome. Okay. Sounds okay. good. All right, then. Thank you. Sorry, I'm not um, looking at chat. Mm -hmm. so thank you for yeah, Just so we can yeah. parallel, you know, if, if whoever's got the bandwidth can can we can answer twice as many questions. Yeah, right. perfect. Yeah, no, no, this is great. This is great. So yeah, yeah. because I'm, I'm so what's ha what's happening is and Gus is just getting a, a taste of, of, you know, the, the somewhat busyness on the TA side. So I monitor the participants line in zoom for raised hands. 
and people dropping in and out, as well as the little squares along the side of my screen. I'm also monitoring chat, but I'm also going into Slack because things pop up in there. Students may send me messages and then sometimes I'll get a message. It, it doesn't happen often, but um, someone on our staff may ping me with a question or something. So I happened to go over there and there was a message. So yeah, I'm in three different areas at one time. So thank you. Yeah, well, I mean, thank you. It <laughs> sounds like you're doing a lot of work. And I'm trying to grab screenshots, Caitlin, which brings me to the point when, when you get a chance, I just wanted to get the finished screenshot of your code around the button. Okay. Just, yeah, because when, when you started, I put um, the screenshot of when it started out without any of the classes. And I just wanted to have that screenshot there of what it looked like when you put all of the classes in. Okay. That sounds good. I can do all that right. in okay. a minute. Wait, yeah. Carolyn. There's no rush. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Where'd I you go? I stopped sharing because I thought um, I, uh, I can share again if make sure yeah, I'm no, I was gonna I was gonna tell you um, to make a commit and push it and see if it okay. pops on so I made uh, index HTML mm -hmm. um, and I've just got the you know the basic thing so far uh, normalize CSS style CSS and readme yeah and that's all I should have oh and of course attributes and all that yeah so all yeah. right here we go so go to your git icon on the left with the four changes <clears throat> and um, I do want you to make note, take note that the main bran that branch icon with the word main is on the bottom of your screen, which means that this folder is connected to GitHub and you're on your main branch. So that's yeah, And that's does positive. the white dot mean that things have to be pushed and stuff to it or just that it's- Yeah, it means, it means there's, um, there's like stuff going on. Which is good. Yeah. <laughs> it's the good. social memory system is working. Okay. It, it means right. that this folder is connected, which is great. So. So put a message. Do you like first commit your? And hit the check. And then hit the check mark. You got it. No changes to commit. Oh, you didn't stage. I saved read me. You, no, 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 because you didn't stage them first. Oopsie. Yep, so just hit the, no, you don't have to re undo anything. Just hit the plus sign on the changes. If you hover over changes. Oh, changes, yeah. Hit plus, and now they're staged, and now you can commit, sorry. It's all right. All right, and now see so you have the arrow with the one next to it on the bottom. That means you need to push you have something outgoing. So you're gonna go to the ellipses. Oh, sorry. sorry. You can do that too. It's just, a, it's like a sync feature where it'll, it'll pull in, push Open it. The head and, sorry. And then hit push. Mm -hmm. And you should be good, no errors. So now go to github.com and you should see all those changes in your repository on GitHub. There you go. Oh, wow. Look at that. <laughs> yeah. Thank Perfect. You. You're welcome. Very much. Okay. So um, I guess this is it for me for now. I'm going to go try and get some energy back. And then I'm diving into the homework. And yeah. Go take a break. Relax for a little bit. Any questions I have, I know that you're somewhere on the internet. <laughs> so, <laughs> your new address is slack.com. Yep. Thank you, Caitlin. Feel better. You're so welcome. Thank you. And is Susan still with us? Feel better. Thank and you. We'll see fine. you folks tomorrow night at the career <laughs> thing, I guess. All right. Thank you. Bye. Have a good night. All right. Who else? I mean, a lot of people are still with us. Okay. Help. <laughs> you need help, Avilia? I need help with all of the okay. flipping back and forth between screens. I got totally lost. All right. So <laughs> where are are you, are you uh, doing the- um, yeah, Setting up you? the folder, finding which okay. folder to put my stuff in. Are you comfortable so sharing your, share. your screen? Share screen. Okay, let me see if I can do this. Uh-oh. Uh <laughs> let see, I always have problems with this. Oops. Help. 
There you go. Okay. <laughs> oh, good. All right. So you're in a different repository right now. So um, did you create the folder already on your in your finder? That's the problem. I didn't know which one to create the folder in. You said it has to be nested? Well, yeah. So go to your finder. Can you open finder or like oh, your sure. desktop files? Okay. Oops, I can't see. I have spotlight on. Oh, oh, you said finder. Never mind. Yeah, I can't see finder though. I think you only shared your one window uh, instead of your desktop. Okay, I'm on finder. Fabelia, can yes. you can you unshare and then share again? And when you share, can you click desktop one? Oh, okay. Oh, uh, because I can't see anything other than GitHub desktop right now. And I think share. Oops. <laughs> Sorry. No, that's okay. Oh no. How do I unshare? Um it's not showing me the um zoom screen. I can stop it for you. There you go. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you said to click on the first one. First um share again and then click on the first. Um, click on desktop one, I should say. Okay. Got it. All right. Yep. That looks better. All right. So now you're going to okay. go to your finder. Okay. Okay. Um, and then where do you, where did, where do you want to put your um, capstone folder? Do you just want it on your desktop? Oh, uh, yeah, that would be good. Okay, so you can- That'd totally be a good place for it because I also have the CIC My Code. Yeah. I have a My Code folder. Um, Wherever you want it to be is fine. Um, as long as you remember where it is and you can find, I think desktop is the perfect place for it. Okay, just on the desktop? Yep, so you can just make a okay. new folder here and you can name it um, Capstone. Well, uh, new folder. Yeah. Hey, Caitlin, while she's doing that, um, a student has just asked me to do a breakout with them to help figure out the folder situation. Okay. Well, well, well okay. So um, I'm just letting you know because for the rest of the students who are here, if you have a question, uh, please come off of mute and um, alert Caitlin that you have a question because some, it's hard to watch the screen and the chat at the same time and she may not see your question. Thank All you. Right. Yeah, you're welcome. All right. Okay, so I have a capstone folder. Mm -hmm. All right, so now you're going to go into your GitHub desktop application. Okay. Um, can you drag it over a bit? Yeah. And okay. then go to um, file, file and new repository. And then you're going to call it, um, you, you can call it capstone again if you want. Okay. Um, or you can call it um, whatever you want to name your capstone if that's easier for you to have a different. I'll put it. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Okay. okay. And then you can add a description if you want to, but you don't have to. Um, and then you're gonna hit where it says local path. You're gonna select the button that says choose. Local path where it says choose. Yeah. Oh, okay. Just um, choose. Okay. Yeah, so choose, and then you're going to choose the folder on your desktop that you just made called Capstone. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Desktop, and that was? Capstone. Capstone. I should put it in an uppercase. It would have been easier to see. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Open. Open, and then um, that's it. And then you're going to hit Create. Okay. And now you're gonna hit publish. Okie dokie. And then you can uncheck the box that says private and then click publish. And it's working, that's great. Woohoo! So now you go to github.com. Okay, and just... Um, if you just open Chrome and go to github.com. Oh, okay. Whoops, wrong thing. 
It looks good. Good job. Oh, thanks. <laughs> that. Okay. And I say get uh, dot com. All right. And then, oh, you're going to need to probably sign in. Can you make that bigger? I don't know. Yeah. I couldn't see that either. There we go. You can X that out, whatever that is. Oh, there you go. You're all signed in. I couldn't even see what was going on yeah. there. I know. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, look, so on the left-hand side, you have a repository now called My Capstone. Do you see that in blue? Uh, do, 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 do. It's the second one down. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. so click that. You can click on, on that. this. Yeah. Oh, okay. And, um, oops. And, and it says you made it two minutes ago, so. Oh, that's cool. You're good. So now if you make any changes in VS Code in this folder, mm -hmm. in the My Capstone folder, um, if you add a file, you can push it to this repository and it will, it will live here and be very happy here and not yeah. lost or messed up. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you're all set with that. Ah, okay. Now what was the thing um, that you did with VS Code? Um, oh, when I was, when I was pushing changes, mm -hmm. that's, that's what I was doing. So, um, okay. If you open, um, VS code, I can, um, walk you through it really quick. It's probably easier than me showing you and then you can get the hang of it. Okay. At VS code. Yep. So, um, you can do file, click new window. Change of plans, Caitlin. Um, because, uh, breakout room one was just created. Um, um, I'm not able to add breakout rooms without interrupting what Max is doing, but the student who was having the problem, you're covering um, what he needed to see anyway, so he's good. Oh, okay. Okay, perfect. Sorry right. about that. that. I should that's, create that's more okay. than one at a time, I guess. I wasn't right. thinking about that. Yeah, so, so for anyone else who needs a breakout, I'm not able to go into breakout, but if you need to join Max's breakout room, just let me know and I'll put you in there. Okay, go ahead, Caitlin. No, that's okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay, so now, Fabilia, you can go to File Open. Okay. File Open. And you're gonna open. You're gonna open the folder with the GitHub repository in it. So go to Desktop. Click on Capstone. And we don't want to open that Capstone folder itself because that Capstone folder is not connected to GitHub. The my okay. capstone folder is connected to GitHub. Oh, okay. And, and the way to know that, um, Fabilia, is when you created this, this is the name of it in GitHub is my capstone. Okay. But that's where it can get confusing. Like Carolyn said, if it has the same name twice, it can get confusing. Um, mm -hmm. So this is a good way to know that you're opening the correct folder for Git. Um, if you okay. ever have trouble and you open the wrong folder, um, Git won't let you push anyway because it won't know where you are. It'll be gotcha. like the wrong level. Um, so you're going to open the My Capstone folder. So click on that folder and then click okay. the button that says open. Oh. Yes. Yep. Now click open. All right. Okay. So you have your Git attributes file. So now you can add a file here. Just add a readme file. Oh, right there. Whoops. I didn't do that, right? It's okay, you can click it again. Oh, no. Back up. <laughs> okay. And then. Yeah. And just readme. It doesn't matter if it's uppercase or lowercase. Uh, all uppercase is. Okay. <clears throat> and then enter. And then you can uh, put whatever you want in there. Yep, and then save it. And you're gonna have a change on the left-hand side in your uh, Git icon. Okay, right there. Mm -hmm. and, and then hit that. Yep. Yeah. And now you can, so the first step is staging the change. So you're gonna add it. You're gonna click the add button, the plus sign, and that's gonna okay. stage it. So it's getting it ready to be committed and pushed. And then in the message bar, you're going to type a message. So usually for the um, first commit, you're going to type first commit. Okay. Whoops. 
<laughs> I'd <had to> sell. <laughs> okay. I, I make so many typos all day. Um, <laughs> it's funny. All right. And now that you have your message typed out, you can actually make the commit and you can hit the check mark. Okay. And then, um, so now it's just kind of gone and waiting like in limbo. It's like in between, it's not pushed yet, but, but you mm. staged it and committed it. So now you're going to hit the three dots and you're going to push it. Okay. It's right. moving across. Yep. And so now if you go to github.com again. Okay. And that should be. Oops. Oh no, we lost it. <laughs> okay. There it is. And now refresh the page. Woohoo, it's there. Oh wow, I see it. <laughs> cool. You're, all set. You're good to go. Thank you. You're so welcome. Feel better, Caitlin. Thank you. I'm trying. The water's helping, but. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good weekend. Thank you. I'll probably be in um, office hours. <laughs> yes, I'll be there. Okay. See you later. <laughs> Bye. When are office hours again? I, I was just going to say, I think I need to put a note in Slack finally. because <laughs> I tried to wait until like the last minute because otherwise it gets lost. But um, Saturday at 11. Saturday at 11. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. If I post it too early, it like gets lost in all the other messages. <laughs> Caitlin, do you know? Okay, so I had already I had already had a GitHub repository for my capstone and everything. Mm -hmm. And then once we and like I was able to open it, like how we open the file to view view our edits and everything like that. Okay. But then after we put them in like the new folders, like we just did, and everything, and I'm making changes and like Command S saving everything to see my changes and everything. The page is just white. Do you know what would have caused that? As if there's nothing in the file. Or do I have to locate it again? Or I'm not sure. Um, can you? Uh, where is the page white? <laughs> like in the okay, so I went to the file and then I clicked on like my capstone folder and then I clicked on index HTML because you know how we can like open the index HTML to see our view our changes and stuff like that. Yeah it's white like there's no change like but I had changes in there previously and I was able to see them and everything like that so like it got so stuff got deleted you think I guess so I'm not really sure like when I click on the index html there's nothing in there but I could still see the code on my vs code like it's right in front of me uh hmm can you show do you mind sharing your screen yeah, hold on. Um, yeah, just give me a second. Let me fix my screen so I can share the appropriate one. Okay. Um, Office hours are posted. Oh, thank that. you. Mm -hmm. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, so this is my code. It's in my um, GitHub repository already. Like, it's here. I see it. All the codes pop up. Index HTML, normalize CSS, blah, blah, blah. Um, why is my file empty? It wasn't empty. Maybe that's why. But like all of this is right here. So it's not empty. And this is the page. Um, and you created this before? No, I just created it with us. And like I was able to, like I had it and then I deleted. <laughs> That's probably why I had one, and probably then I, right. I, yeah, probably because I had one, and then we I thought that I, I was following along and I like created a new one, so then I deleted one. I probably deleted the wrong one, yeah. It seems like now it's the yeah, so should I just like commit it again? I mean, there are no what is the change? What does the change say? Oh, I see. Wait, wait. Go back to GitHub Desktop. Oh, okay. Um, go to the um tab that says changes with a one next to it. There. It's because so oh, when you're in his so commit to main. Wait a second. I want to explain what you were looking at first, but yeah, that's what you're gonna do. But um okay. when where you look at click on the history tab. 
on the history tab, you're looking at the file as it looked in the past when you did your first commit. It had nothing in it. Okay. You just created that empty file first. Now you have changes and those changes have that HTML code in them. And that's what you need to push up. So you're looking at a blank one here because there was nothing here when you made that first commit 32 minutes ago, but now you have changes to commit. Got Does it. that make sense? Yes, I probably deleted the wrong one. That's probably what happened. And then you're gonna push. You have to push click on um, here, right? Yeah, Wait, you can, no, go back to GitHub desktop. You're clicking around too much. Sorry. <laughs> you, there's a button that says push. 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 <laughs> okay. Thanks. That's all. There all you right. go. Now you're fine. So now I need to figure out why this page isn't coming up. So that looks, you can you that. go in your code really quick? Is this, this is your capstone, okay. Yeah. Um, can you open the index.html file and um, like right click on it in VS Code? Yeah, and click reveal in Finder. Sorry. And then open it. There, it's there. Okay. You were looking at the um, wrong file probably somehow. Got it. Okay. Makes sense. So you're fine. You didn't lose anything. <laughs> That's homework. Okay, cool. Stop sharing. Thank you. You're welcome. Everybody else doing okay? We're free to leave, right? Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Corey. If you don't okay. need help with anything. <laughs> I had stepped off to the restroom and then I came back. Yeah, um, you're fine. Okay. It's Thank almost, you. I mean, it's 7.38, so. Yep, no, I'm just going to jump into homework. Okay, yeah. thank you. Uh, Corey, are you, you're leaving the, the Zoom meeting? Yes. Okay. Um, so don't forget you have another meeting. Yeah, I do. At a, at a certain time. Okay. Yeah. So just, just just check for the link. Oh my God. And if and if, and if there are any YouTube. if there are any problems, just this hit me up on Slack. Well, you know how to reach. Sure. Yeah. All right then. Okay. 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 All right. Hey. Hello. Can I, can I share something from the breakout room that I just wanted to say? And um, I don't know what you've been all hearing about the uh, capstones, but. I hope there's not a misconception that now that we've made a GitHub repo, tomorrow everybody should be writing code and checking oh, no, in God. GitHub. Like <laughs> this is this is the code we're going to learn is going to be take some time. It's a process. We're just trying to make sure everybody is aware of the pro of the project, making progress on it. I hope everybody still has the sense that like what you should be working on is largely design concepts, wireframes, all those things, finding images, you know, to, to put into it later. Don't worry so much if you're not, if you're not making code that is going to be a beautiful thing in time, like that is, this is going to take some time and the skills you're learning are like such, so important too. So like, you know, don't stress out too much about the pace of, 
the capstone. I know like that might be directly against what Jesse says, but like, I got to say that because like, I think some people are going too far into like worrying that their, their, their capstone isn't going to be, you know, perfect or whatever. Don't worry too much about that. Yeah. Thank you guys for um, reiterating that. We're just trying to get you guys set up, basically set up for success here. So yeah. um, whatever little things we can do to help you along the way. Um, so don't feel pressure now that you have a GitHub repo at all. Like there's no pressure at all with that. Um, but now that you have it, you have a safe place to put your code. Um, if you or images, that, yeah, you or, can put, or, you can put wireframes in there. You can put any kinds anything. of things in there. Yeah. Um, it doesn't have to all be code. Um, so organize your stuff that way. If that helps you. Absolutely. That was a really good point, Gus. And there's definitely like, it's this, it's, you know, the same as last time, but I think we're trying to be a bit more like proactive this time. That's the only difference here. Yeah, a lot of the the constant mentioning of the capstone, it's just to make sure everybody's thinking about it. That's what it is. Yeah. And 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 putting some regular regular time into it. It doesn't mean regular time into coding right now. It means regular time into thinking about it, planning for it, designing it, all of it. So, yeah. Anyway, that's all. <laughs> Thank you, Gus. And yeah, we're going to go over this kind of stuff first day. It's going to be like a reset and a check in. We'll see how everyone's doing. We'll take it from there. I was going to add one of the strategies that I think helped me um, to finally move forward with my capstone was to step back. And, and really to stop thinking so much about the code and to say, this is what I want it to look like. And this is what I want it to do. This is what I want this button to look like. And this is what I want it to do. When I click it, I want it to do this. Maybe I don't want it to do anything, but when I click it, I want it to take me to this. And that's an excellent, that's an excellent place to be right now. Um, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I am having trouble connecting my folder to my GitHub as well. Okay. Uh, I didn't even get that. I, I'll just, I'll just show you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Go ahead, share your screen. Thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> it is a learning process. It's extremely uh, irritating at first, but um, once you get the hang of it, it's super um, helpful. Okay. I just have to move my stuff out of the way. Um, so I have the, oh gosh, I'll move this out of the way. Um, <laughs> When I look at my repositories, it shows the capstone here. Yeah. And I have it in my folder, but it's not connected. So, and I wasn't sure, like, because I created it here separately. Oh. And then I created the folder separately. Yeah. So now you need to clone this and put it in your folder. That's what Gus right. was saying that he usually does. I believe that he creates okay. repositories here and mm -hmm. then clones them onto his local um like machine so okay. if you click on the um capstone right there mm -hmm. you should get like a mm, oh yeah uh oh there's no like um you can do setup in desktop actually because you have it or do you not do you have github desktop uh i believe i downloaded everything the first day that we were supposed to now, whether or not it's still there, it you doesn't look like it is. It looks like you have Git Kraken, but it would have opened it, I think, if you had it. So yeah, I would just do what the button says. Download. Yeah. Download again. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, just download this one. It's uh, much easier than Git Kraken, but what? I don't even know what Git Kraken is. <laughs> <laughs> well, we tried to use it because, like, visually, it it's like it shows like all the branching and stuff like that but um it wasn't as 
like easy to start out with, I should say. Like GitHub Desktop is more straightforward. Okay. Yeah. Um, make sure you drag this to your applications folder. Sorry. No, that's okay. I just didn't want to forget to mention it. Now go to the applications folder and open it. That's weird. Yeah. I'm All a right. very novice user comparatively of, of Git and GitHub compared to some of the people I work with. They're doing typing all this stuff, get rebase this and that. And I'm nope, 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 nope. <laughs> That's yeah. scary. I don't want to do any of that. Oh, I yeah. thought you were telling me to stop. I was like, okay. Oh no, no sorry. No, 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 no. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> um you can stop sharing your screen if you need to sign in here. Um it looks like it's just oh okay. It already it already did all of that. So okay, by perfect. itself. Okay. Um oh oh yeah. Okay, because you opened it before. It's okay, click move and restart. Okay. Click okay. So I don't know what happened. I definitely did it that first, whenever it was assigned. Yeah, click but... um, click cancel. Mm -hmm. Oh. Oh, now I want you to open that finder window that's bouncing at the bottom, I think. Yeah, click okay. Okay, it's already there, but um, so close GitHub desktop completely, like quit it. Oh, up here. Am I still on it? I don't even yeah, know. Yeah, you might it. have to click on the icon. Oh, click right here behind this window. Right here. Yeah, and then click on GitHub desktop up there in the menu bar. Or probably like file quit or something. Spinny uh, thing won't allow me to. Okay, click, click cancel here, maybe. Why is it stuck? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Do now, not yet. Click move and restart. She did, and then it brought her to find her, but then it yelled at her, so. Oh, okay. Well, now it's kind of stuck in a loop. Well, click cancel then. You Won't let try, me. Caitlin, you could try on the bottom um, bar. Oh what yeah, the icon is and right click and force quit it. Right here. Okay, I gotta remove our faces out of the way. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I it just kind of moves around by itself sometimes. It's okay. Not very accurate circle, but right here. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you for circling that for me. And what am You're I welcome. doing? <laughs> How do you draw on the screen like that? Are you like there's, the moderator? Um, yeah, there's a so if you when you're the person in charge. <laughs> What is the word for that? Uh, the host. Um, you can. There's a feature called annotate, and you can do that. Oh, it's cool. cool! I'll yeah. have to get that working. It took me a little bit to mess around with it. I almost asked if somebody wanted to like Zoom call with me so I could play with all the features first. <laughs> um, okay, so now now try to open the application from the applications folder. Hmm. It's just going slow, I think. Oh, maybe I should stop clicking on it 20 times. Yeah, you're good. It's there. All right. Okay. So now click on the first one that says this one. Um hold on. Uh I, I yes. don't know. If it, I don't no. know if it, is it already on github.com? It is. So what does she do from here? Clone a repository from the internet. Okay. That's what I thought. And then you're going to click on your repository there. Yep. yep. And then make sure this is the correct folder you want where it says local path and it says choose. Click choose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I guess so because I, I didn't create that GitHub in my folders, but I guess but you... Yes. Yeah, so so yeah. you don't want this to clone here in your documents. You want it to clone where you already made that folder on your desktop. Okay. So you want to change that. So you're going to go to desktop and then you're going to go mm -hmm, and yeah, capture here. There so I, I don't have that other one yet. Is that okay? Yep. So click okay. that and okay. this is going to, this is going to create that for you. So now you're going to say open. Got it. And now, now it's in the correct place and then you're going to clone. 
So if you um, just hit clone there, it would have created that like GitHub repository like in your documents folder, uh -huh. but it would have been connected to the folder that you created on your desktop. It would have been two different things. So. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, and then you're all set. This Now they're connected, they should be connected. So if you make changes in um, Visual Studio Code, uh -huh. and push those to this GitHub, um, they should show up. For you. Okay, and you've done this a couple times, so I know I can go yeah. back to this video and watch the steps when it's time yeah. to do it. So absolutely, <laughs> thank you both. <laughs> You're welcome. Thanks, Gus, for helping out. Wait, you can open this in VS Code too, right? Yep. Yeah. Cool. You can, yeah, that's neat. You can click the button that says "Open in VS Code." Um, oh, whoa, whoa! I've never even noticed that. Me cool. either until just now. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. The kids think, these days, they I have such an sharing. easy time. Oh, here it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's practically done for you. <laughs> it's a joke, folks. It's very hard. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> you're just as funny as ever. Um. All right. Here we go. Wearing my daughter's headphones and the microphone is up so high. It drives me nuts. I think I'm gonna make some dinner and eat that. Ping me on Slack if you got if anything else comes up tonight. But I'll see everyone Monday. Awesome. So are are you gonna be in the meeting tomorrow? The the instructor yeah, Dan, handoff I'll see meeting. You. I'll, I'll see you for the instructor handoff. Okay, great. And and Caitlin and uh, Karen's not here anymore, but, or wait. Yeah, she's right. here. <laughs> see you uh, tomorrow and see everyone else Monday. Thanks, Gus. It was good to see you. Bye. Have a good night, Gus. It was nice meeting you. Good to meet well, you. See you now. I just realized I had my video off. I'm sitting sitting here talking. I was like, nobody, I don't think anybody knows it's me. Let me turn my video back on. Oops. Yeah, that, that was me sitting over here whining about my daughter's headphones. This microphone is so high. I put it down and it just pops back up again. So. Does anybody um, mind if I stop the recording or anything? Does anybody have any other burning questions? Okay. <laughs>